Oh yes, the campaign's really underway. We love it here on The Daily Politics. We are the supporters of long campaigns. <laughs> With us to discuss all of this are the Lib Dem MP Tom Brake, Labour's Kevin Brennan, and UKIP's culture spokesperson Peter Whittle. Culture spokesperson. Yes, indeed. Is that, a, is, that, is that a zero hours job or a full time job? Oh, it's a it's a full time job. I mean, we we tend to look at culture in a more uh, in a broader way. So it includes the arts, but also what you might call other cultural issues such as our values and and multiculturalism and things like that. And immigration, I suppose, we'll get a look. So it sort of comes into that too. What a surprise! Anyway, uh, you talk about an immediate referendum on on Europe being a red line for UKIP if you mm. support another party, but Mr. Farage has ruled out being in a formal coalition. Why? Well, because we're not in this fight to form or prop up another party. I mean, this is the, the situation now that we're going into in politics, is that all the other parties are sort of thinking along coalition lines because they realise they just simply don't have the support of the British people. You know, we're going into this because this is a, a totally new era in British politics. We have brought it about. It's hugely exciting. There are people now who are getting involved in politics and going along to our meetings who wouldn't have done uh, for 10, 20 years. I meet them every day. All right, but what do you mean by an immediate referendum? Well, I mean, basically, obviously, that is one of our, our most important uh, No, I know that, but points. what do you mean by it? Well, we would like to see a referendum on our uh, membership of the EU. No, I, no, I understand that. <coughs> I mean, even I, with a low IQ, have understood that. <laughs> I'm trying to find, what do you mean by immediate? Well, I mean, the elections on May the 7th, when would you want the referendum? Well, uh, why should it not be in 2016? You know, oh, why no, wait no, no, I ask the questions. Why, 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 what why do you wait? mean by an immediate referendum? Well, we, as soon as possible, we would like a referendum on our membership of yep. the EU. We don't see any reason why we should wait to 2017. And we also don't see why we should trust David Cameron in any shape or form well, on what he might say about it. Well, why do we have to wait to 2016? Why couldn't it be in the in autumn of this year? Indeed, why not? Why well, not? no, as I'm asking you. <laughs> as soon as possible. Uh, you, you haven't made up your mind yet, have you? Yes, we... Well, look, uh, we absolutely would like it's a priority a referendum on our membership of the EU so there is no reason why that should not be immediately in the in the next government uh, or or next year but why wait two years unless you're trying to kind of buy time well you're trying to renegotiate you wouldn't have any renegotiation you would go and have a referendum on the existing terms of membership absolutely I mean th there is no chance of, ref uh, of, of uh, any kind okay. of renegotiation and the fact is is that uh, David Cameron knows this all right Tom Brick uh, we've got the front page mm -hmm. uh, are these your red lines in any possible coalition deal no, and uh, contrary to, to what's just been said, we're not in the business of talking about coalitions. We're in the business of winning as many seats in the next general election as we can. What the public then decides in terms of <coughs> which party gets the most members of parliament, we'll have to wait and see. Right, but you obviously want a hung party. I mean, you're not going to win the election. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, you'll be lucky to hold on to uh, half the seats you have, according to the polls. Uh, so when, if, as is likely, we have a, another hung parliament, that's what the polls suggest at the moment, is nothing on that front page of your manifesto a red line? Well, I think what is very clear is that we need to finish the job that uh, we've started in terms yeah. of addressing the, the budget deficit, and that is a priority, and that's a priority for us. I think we want yeah. to build on what we've already achieved. Uh, but in terms of trying to, if, if there is a, a hung parliament, uh, having a, a negotiating position that sets out these are the things that we insist on, that, that is not going right. to be but our I, approach. No. But I'm try I didn't ask what the priority was. I'm trying to work out whether there's anything on that front page of your manifesto that is non-negotiable, that in any coalition talks can't be negotiated away. Well, these are our priorities. Uh, we want to no, I know that, ensure that the, red lines? we deal with the budget deficit in the next three years. Uh, and that you, you, we, you, from then on, that we ensure that we don't do that by uh, piling additional pressure on the poorer section of the population, right. which is what the Conservatives would like but to do. But we have an end date I'm, for getting rid of the deficit, which the Labour Party haven't given us. That's a really interesting answer. But it's not to the question I asked you. What I'm trying to establish is, can, since you put them on the front page of your manifesto, we should assume, I, I assume rightly, that you regard them as important. Very important, or they wouldn't be on the front page. So I'm trying to work out, is there anything on that front page that is non-negotiable, or could it be negotiated away, just like your promise on tuition fees? Well, these are the things that are a priority for us. You we wait for the times. outcome of the election, and we will see... Uh, if, okay. which is the majority party and uh, there may or may not be negotiations after that. You don't mention Europe on the front page so I guess you would be able to do a deal with the Tories on a referendum. 
Well, what we've said very clearly on Europe is that we believe that the UK is much better yeah. being in the European no, Union. I know that. We've made That's it very clear you. that a, a referendum is something that we think should happen at the point of a major treaty change, and that, change, and that has been our position consistently. If Europe is a priority for you, why isn't that on the front page of the manifesto? Well, I don't think that Europe, again, contrary to what uh, UKIP uh, seem to believe, U Europe is not something that people talk about on the doorstep. Oh, really? What they talk about is the NHS, what they talk about is uh, the, the problems that people have experienced since the, uh, the almighty crash that we had in 2008 okay. and the impact that's had on their, on, on their cost of living, for instance. Right. Those are the things people will talk about, not whether we should or should not be in the European Union. Uh, Kevin Brennan, uh, you on education, which I believe the leader of the opposition is talking about in the, very shortly. That's right. Uh, you're reintroducing one of Tony Blair's key policies, but in a watered-down form. That's not very inspiring. I presume you're talking about capping class sizes for yes, five to Yes, primary class olds. fives, um, yes. I don't accept that's in a watered-down form. I mean, right. what we've said is that what the current government has done by relaxing that rule has enabled the numbers of children being taught in class sizes over 30 in infant schools to treble from 30,000 to around 90,000. And uh, if that trend continued, it would get far worse in the years to come. So we're reintroducing uh, that rule. Well, but, but except that, hold on, uh, John Prescott said, and he carried it around in his car, I remember he used he to show it to me yeah. on, uh, on programs like this, cut class sizes to 30 or, or uh, under for five, six and seven year olds by using money from the assisted that's right, places. Yeah. Schemes. That's, that's all gone. You're saying that you'll do the same thing, but they can't have 30 pupils for more than 12 months. That's a watering down. Well, no, that exemption existed under the old rules as well. So there's, there's it wasn't no, on the pledge card. There's no, it wasn't on the pledge card. But so it's that, just the a same A limited then. amount you can fit on a credit card sized pledge card, but in the detail of it, that was part of the so detail. So it's, it's just a recycling it, then of it, an old policy. It, it, is a, it is a policy that we adopted before it's one that the coalition government decided to abandon and as a result of that the numbers of children being taught have trebled and, and that's the reason why we're doing that and we're going to fund that by stopping this nonsense of building extra places in free schools in areas where there are already sufficient places. How much will you say for that? It's, it, I think the, the NAO, NAO said it's 240 million the cost of the free school places it's yeah, significantly that, under that. Yeah but that, that's Probably the around, ones that have already been built. But there are many more uh, being planned by the government that are in the budgets that they're... R the you well but, so, um, so but how, what's the saving from the ones that are being planned? The overall figures that um, is 240 million no. is the, the savings so but far. But that's the ones that they've built. And as I understand it... You're not closing the ones you've built, are you? No, we're not. But so I, the only saving is in not it, building new ones. As I understand it, the funds are there from recycling from oh. the free school plans. Uh, to be able to cover the cost of well, the pledge and it's fully covered. It's not enough to understand it. You have to tell us how you're going to pay for it. First of all, how much is this going to cost, the primary school one? It'll be probably in the region of about 180 million. And therefore, can you, but you don't know how much you would save by not building any more free schools? I believe it's 240 million. No, you told me that was the amount that you'd already spent on free schools. Mm. The, the government had spent on free schools. Mm. But, the, they're, but they're pledged forward to yeah, expand their... Yeah, but I understand that. So how much? The, they're pledging forward to expand the policy. So I understand that, but by how much? And are you sure that in the plan to extend it, that the government's actually yet allocated funds for that? Um, well, uh, if they haven't, then they've got serious questions to answer uh, themselves about it. But um, on the assumption that they have said that they've funded their plans, uh, I'm assuming that they have allocated they haven't. They've got very serious questions to answer about their financial planning. Are the Tories only going to talk about the economy? Of course not. But the economy is absolutely central to the lives of everyone in this country. And what we have seen is a remarkable recovery from the incredible mess that Labour left behind. And it's easy to forget now, under what sustained pressure David Cameron and George Osborne mm. came to change tack, to abandon the policy, mm. because everybody said it would fail and we'd never get growth, right. and now we're the fastest growing economy in Europe. Well, we are the fastest growing economy in Europe, and yet we still face, under Mr Osborne, another five years of austerity. Well, we... we obviously haven't yet solved all the problems. But you said but you would. A, it, Not it, all the problems, but you said that no, you would have we, things back in an even keel after one full term. You've had one full term and all you're saying is more of the same. We're saying we've made substantial progress, the job is not yet done, it would be well, absolute folly to change course. It's not even half done, is it? Well, it, it depends how you calculate oh, it. Well, that's calculated the, by the way the, you calculated, yeah, which is the deficit, deficit percentage been, of GDP. It's only half done. 
It's half. Well, you said it wasn't half done. It well, I said barely half done. Well, <laughs> do it the other way. It's half, it's do half it in done. money terms, no. and it's not half done. Now, as a percentage of GDP, it's mm. half done. There's more to do. Don't change course. We are on track. Let's carry on with the long-term economic plan, right. which is proving so successful. I knew you'd get that phrase in. <laughs> if I had a pound for every time a Conservative said it, I wouldn't have to bother working. We'd go and live in Switzerland. Um, You've, uh, you're kind of stuck on 15% of the vote at the moment, aren't you? You may end up with only a couple of seats. No, I think we'll do a lot, lot better. I think you'll be very surprised, Andrew. Uh, you know, we're not going to end up with just a couple of seats. How many, are you, going to end up, how many are you going to end up with? Up, well, I think we will surprise everybody. Um, but I think, interestingly, you know, just if I'd been on this show, say, like a year ago, the idea that we would have even parliamentary seats would have caused gales of laughter from the people around the table. Uh, suddenly people now are talking about, well, you know, how many are you really going to get and all the rest of it. Uh, I mean, the fact of the matter is our progress has been astonishing in this. You say stuck on 15%. Yeah. We've had not just the scrutiny well, you should have, in, 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 obviously in politics, but unbelievable attacks and smears, and still we stay but you got firm. But you got 27% in the European elections. You're now down to 15, and it's possible if that 15%... Like that. If that 15% is evenly spread over a lot of constituencies, you may only get a handful of seats. No, I think that, as Nigel said today, we certainly are truly a, a national party. Um, but the fact is we haven't dropped from 27 mm. to 15. It doesn't really work that way. Um, we've gone up from whatever it was, uh, 2, 3, 4, 7% in the past when it comes to general elections to now being consistently on at least 15%. Uh, that is extraordinary. Um, it's frightening the other parties, and that is why they right. get so attacked. Okay. Uh, since I've got you here on uh, as, as the only Labour person we could get a hold of on, uh, I'm sorry if that's on, <laughs> on this. Uh, no, we're delighted to see you. I mean, I'm particularly <laughs> delighted to see you. In, in what way is the Prime Minister dodgy? Well, uh, what Ed Miliband said was he's dodgy because he accepts donations, and the Conservative Party accepts donations from dodgy donors. Hey, Stanley uh, Fink, a dodgy donor. Well, Ed Miliband didn't say that. He did, he did say he, he, he was a tax avoider, and, I, and I've got what Stanley Fink has said this morning, and he, he said, I don't even want to sue Ed Miliband, because he said everybody avoids tax. Now, I think, actually, he may have some questions so, to answer with some of my constituents if he's saying that they're tax avoiders, but, but he's admitted but, but, but he's but a tax avoider. But, 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 well, but lots of people avoid tax. Indeed, I, but, but not uh, everyone it depends avoids tax. On, it depends on the... Uh, the, the nature, the manner of the avoidance. So I ask you again, is Stanley Fink dodgy? Well, you didn't ask me that in the first place. You well, asked me if David Cameron what? was dodgy, but... No, I, I and didn't no ask one you. Said, no, 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 I'm sorry. No I asked you well, as to the answer. Uh, Ed Miliband didn't say he was dodgy, so as far as so I'm he's concerned... he's not dodgy. ...to the best of my knowledge, but he is a tax avoider, and he's admitted it himself this morning. So everything that Ed Miliband said was accurate. He's not going to sue him, and he's accepted. But that he is, says... That what he did in, is tax he, avoidance. Well, but he says that he's done the mildest of tax... Avoids. That's what he says. I don't know if it's true. That's right. what he's saying. Right. If it's as mild as he says it is, is that worthy of bringing up in the House of Commons with the Prime Minister? Well, I think most of the public are concerned when they find that the people at the head of the Conservative Party, the treasurer of the Conservative Party, are people who go out of their way to come up with complex arrangements to avoid paying their fair share of tax. But he says that's not a complex My constituents all pay their fair share of tax. Why don't the people at the top of the Conservative Party think it's their duty to pay their fair share of tax? So that's, that's the question that we're putting, and I think that's a question many ordinary people would like to hear answered. So if someone puts their money in an ISA, exactly. is that a tax avoidance? No, it isn't. Well, but you don't pay tax. No, it isn't. They're not setting up a specific trust in order to avoid the tax. In another, in another, in another, is a specific in fund another jurisdiction. To avoid tax. It's, it's effectively a savings account, is an ISA, oh, which he everybody said that his is trust allowed. was a savings it's, account. It, it, what he did overseas in a foreign jurisdiction is parked his he, money he, in a in he a, lived in, in Switzerland. A, in a, you wouldn't open a, a bank account. If you lived in another country, you wouldn't open a bank account. I can assure you, I've never done anything of that kind. I, I didn't ask worked. you that. I'm simply saying. And neither of most of my constituents. If you worked in another country, wouldn't you open a bank account there? I'm sure I would. Well, that's what he says he's I, done. I think if you read what he said, he's done more than that this uh, morning. Can and we he just clarify? In some detail what he did. Uh, is tax avoidance illegal? No, it isn't. So why are you raising it? Because, is as I said... Is there any suggestion he's broken the law? As I, there isn't any suggestion, to the best of my knowledge, that he's broken the law. But as I said earlier on, people do, uh, you know, people do it because it's possible for them to do it. The question is, if you're asking other ordinary people around the country 
to take a real hit in terms of the austerity measures that the government have involved, in terms of the cuts to public services they're suffering, the bedroom tax, other things like yeah. that, and you are at the head of uh, the, the governing party, the Conservative Party, the treasurer of that party, and you're but going out of your way to ago. avoid paying your taxes, to avoid paying your taxes that pay for public services, those are legitimate issues to raise. And but most ordinary people, Andrew, who know nothing about these kinds of arrangements would be pretty he, appalled to find out that's what they're ago. up to. And your point is? Well, it's got nothing to do with austerity. This was done years ago. It's nothing to do with the current But he's uh, a climate. major donor to the Conservative Party, as are many other major donors to the Conservative Party and involved in these sorts of arrangements. One of them had to resign from the House of Lords indeed. because he wouldn't Just rectify his tax question. affairs. One, has Labour never taken money from people who've been involved in tax avoidance? We may well have done, I'm afraid, ah. Andrew. It's perfectly possible okay. that may have happened. OK, we'll leave it there. Thank you all very much. We're going to talk more about the Conservative Party with you, Michael Howard, uh, uh, later, so you don't get to go.